if I take one, Alice Poultry. Hi, Alice. He was a giant among music greats, a genius of improvisation. And although John Coltrane, distinguished tenor saxophonist, has been dead for over three years, much of the man still lives on. Music was his life, and he lived it to the fullest extent, exploring that which was unborn, adding new dimensions to that which already existed. He said, I am looking for a universal sound, and perhaps it was this search which led him to explore the cultures of the Far East. Those who worked with Train respected and even worshipped him. They say he was a quiet, deep thinker, and his music reflects such profound thought. The golden sax, which led a relentless search for a universal sound, has been silent for three years now. However, Train has left more than a legend behind. There are his sons, his daughter, and carrying on the work and spirit of John Coltrane is his wife, Alice. The strongest influence, the most overpowering influence is John on my life and my music. I call him a very spiritual man. He believed in the universality of religion and the fact that there was a sameness, a oneness, like one creator, creator of all people. And uh, he had his own rules, if you want to call it a religion. He had certain things that he observed, certain um, things in his diet. He was a vegetarian. Uh, he had certain hours for meditation uh, during the day and night. Uh, and he had his ideas of how he wanted his children brought up, you know. He didn't want to to uh, direct their uh, their thoughts, you know, when it came to what they would like to choose, you know. I feel the same way as John does. The same way he felt about religion. I don't have a set religion to, or religious faith, you know, to say I belong to this faith or this church or so forth, you know. But I know that I am a spiritual being. I can say that today. I am a spiritual being. John was my direction. I feel that, that this is the way that I had to go in life because I accept uh, the music from him, you know, except uh, the things that he that he did, and it seems to be exactly what I want to do because there's so many things that he did in music, I would have done the same way myself. It was always when he played that expression that came out of him was really what was inside, you know, whatever was real, whatever was truth. This is what came out of John when he played. You know, my background was uh, piano, but I've studied organ and theory, harmony. The first practice on harp was done around about 1965. Maybe it's the way it's because I know uh, the instrument is is of uh, Egyptian origin, but uh, when I play it. I don't know, maybe the flowingness of it or the the way it's so uh, harmonically and uh, melodically set, so different from uh, the piano, uh, for example. It makes me recall Egypt, ancient Egypt. It makes me seem to remember that, that, that I have a past or a history there somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. 
like to uh, let my children be first in my life. They're first to me. They, I feel they're my presence from John. Uh, so I'm not, I really don't have to leave home. I mean, John provided well enough an income uh, from all of the work he did. I don't have to leave my children to go out to work. Yeah, so they come first, and if I do get concerts or I have to do uh, work in recording, I do it. But I always, I, I never take away that much time from home. I like to be home, and I don't like to go too far or travel too far away. Michelle is 10, John is 6, Robbie is 5, and Oran is 3. Uh, this year, three years since uh, John's death, uh, I've played about four or five concerts and really, uh, to me, it's quite a lot of work because uh, I didn't do anything over the past years. So I liked it very much, uh, that concert. We played at the Glen Cove. One thing that I liked about it was the fact that, that we played for so many children. This is a part of, of, of the music. Uh, and Farrell Sanders, as you know, was one of the members of John's band. I had Reggie Workman and Bill Wood on bass. I had my drummer, Rashid Ali, on drums. My concert, I played a selection written by my husband. Uh, entitled Africa. It's the feeling that I get from playing his music. It's, it's a sort of a sharing, you know, with him. It's sort of a being with him on the mental plane or on the a spiritual plane. But for, for me to, to play his music, I don't feel that I'm an extension and I don't feel that I can contribute to anything that he did musically but I just share in the things that he did, the, all the things that he developed and produced, I share in them. like to say, to state at this time, that there were days that I know that I spent more than 20 hours in meditation. 
and there were periods of time that lapsed like beyond uh, two or three weeks that I know that I was well beyond what the human endurance is when it comes to meditation. And uh, I found out so much about myself and about the people around me and about my husband and family. And also I found that out that whatever questions that I might have had in my mind concerning whatever events in the future or past uh, were answered. My personal experience uh, in meditation brought me face to face with God. Hand in hand, heart to heart. And almost to the point he was me and I was him. Or we were just us. I don't know how to phrase it. It was just a closeness that it's just impossible to be that close with, with a human. What kind of effect has it had on your life since then? I think that it gave me freedom. I think it gave me my true independence that no matter where I go in the world or whatever I do or whatever my involvement, I'm free. Uh, that the earth, the world cannot claim me anymore. Like I said, there were demands made, definite demands, which uh, took me um, away from uh, of the world. You know, and at one point almost away from everything, music, family, and all, because the sacrifice had to be within an inch of my life, almost literally. And uh, I feel that because it was such a high price paid, now, I can't say it was the highest price as Buddha or Christ, because that was life, you know, or, or, or Martin Luther King. It was life, you know, but I've been very close to the end of my life, and I feel that that uh, uh, I've been given my freedom now. That I can I can act, I can be, I can live as I want to, and nothing can. Uh, there's no claim, no one can bind me, or there's no action I have to pay. I have no commas to pay. You know, I have. Uh, I think I've, all of it has been given back to me. That I'm free.